Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is having a better day than the markets right now. Uh, but we'll take a look at all that. Our main story is an Argo. They sold a 27 exa has potential facility in Texas, Helios, no more, but also bankruptcy, no more. So they escaped bankruptcy, uh, but we'll take a look at all the story behind it. And then in the news today, we got MicroStrategy sells and then buys more Bitcoin and then the mining pool gets hacked. So we'll look at all those. Markets were down today. Bitcoin was down. Ethereum was down today. So it wasn't a good day. Miners were also down today. A lot of them also reached new 52-week lows today, including DMG, Hive, Marathon, Riot, BitDigital, Digihost, Iris Energy, Sphere 3D, Soluna as well. We'll look at all those numbers as well. But as always, you guys know the drill here, not financial advice. For entertainment only, do your own research as always. And I'm investing in fine coins and companies for full disclosure. And let's get into the markets. But if you enjoy this type of content, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out. Okay. So here's the markets. The S&P was down today 1.2% to 3,083. 3,783, sorry. Dow Jones was down 1.1% to 32,875. And the NASDAQ was down 1.32% to 10,679. Bitcoin was also down a day. It was down about 0.95% on the day. It closed at 16,539. We hit a low of 16,460. And the high was 16,777. It does appear like we are kind of at a support range right now, about 16,500. We can see this on the line here. Uh, that we've had kind of a support here. We've mostly been bouncing below it here a little bit, you can see, but lately it's been more of a support line. So that's good news there. Looking at the four-hour chart, RSI has come down. Price has also come down in the four-hour chart as well. We are at 34 on the RSI right now. Last time we were back here, price at that point was higher, so it's not looking good. In the four hours, one-hour chart, RSI is at 41. Last time we were anywhere near here, was right around here. Price was higher at that point too. So it is looking a little bit bearish on the one hour and the four hour chart. Ethereum closed today, uh, was down also, was down 1.8%. It closed at 1,189. We hit a low of 1,180 and a high of 1,215. And it is mirroring basically what Bitcoin is doing as well. Miners were a little bit mixed today. We have some that were down, some that were up. Any was down 1.04% to 27 cents. Argo was up today quite nicely, 36.29%, based on the news that came out today with um, them, sell them selling the Helios facility in Texas. So the market liked that. That avoided them getting into bankruptcy, so that was good. Then we got BitDigital was down 0.79% to 53 cents, almost 54. BitFarms was up 5.45% to 40 cents. CleanSpark was down 3.72% to $1.81. Coors was also up today 3.88% to 9 cents. Digihost was down 6.83% 6 to 35 cents. DMG was down 11, sorry, 14.12% to 10 cents. Greenage was up 22.07% to 28, almost 29 cents. Hive was down 4.67% to $1.43. Hut 8 was up 1.94% to 80 cents. Iris Energy was down 9.4% to $1.06. Luxfolio was down 44% to Three tenths of a penny right now. Marathon was down 2.93% to $3.15. It's been a bad couple of weeks for Marathon. They have been falling down quite a bit here since October 22nd. If we just look at it, they have fallen down approximately 78%. Um, so that is painful for all of those guys invested in Mara. And it's painful for everybody right now in the market that we're in. Boston was down 8.9% to $0.21. Cents. Riot was down 3.8% to $3.29. They've also been coming down here. If we look at it really quick, they are down. Let's go from the peak to the bottom. They are down 56% in 43 trading days. So not good. We're definitely feeling the hurt right now in the miners. And then Solana was up 5.38% to 27 Stronghold was down 425 to 41 Wolf was down 13.38% to $0.59, cents, and that is it. So let's take a look at the network hash rate really quick, so we'll see what's going on there. And if we adjust it, uh, we're coming back down some more. 222 million Terra hashes right now, and that's on the seven-day average. On the one-day average, we can see, ooh, had a, quite a bit of a spike here. Uh, let's see, where are we at now? We spiked quite high, 295. Wow, that's a pretty big spike there. 295 million Terra hashes. So it looks like miners are getting plugged back in. The winter storm is pretty much passing by. So things are starting to warm up and less electricity is being used. 
by households, businesses, and things like that, which now allows the miners to turn the machines on again. So that's good news there. Okay, so let's take a look at our first story here, which is uh, micro strategy is selling. Well, first they sell, then they buy. So Michael Saylor software company framed for uh, framed the sale as being for tax benefits, but its appetite for amassing Bitcoin hasn't yet waned. Here's what it says. Let's take a look at it down here. So MicroStrategy sold 704 BTC for about 11.8 million on December 22nd. The company wrote today in a filing with the United States Securities and Exchange Commission a move that may benefit the company in terms of tax liabilities given how much value BTC has lost since MicroStrategy has first begun acquiring the cryptocurrency in 2020. That's, that's way down. I think their average is around 30,000. MicroStrategy plans to carry back the capital losses resulting from this, this transaction against previous capital gains. To the extent such carrybacks are available under the federal income tax laws currently in effect, which may generate a tax benefit to the company road. So they did it for tax benefits. However, the firm then turned around and purchased 810 BTC for, for about 13.6 million on December 24th, paired with another 2,395 BTC that the company said it purchased between November 1st and December 21st for a total of 42.8 million. MicroStrategy has now added about two and a half uh, thousand BTC to its overall tally since the start of last month. So they're still on a buying spree. So that puts the company's total Bitcoin holdings at approximately 132,500, currently valued at just over 2.2 billion based on the current Bitcoin price of about 16,735. And MicroStrategy continues to accumulate the, le uh, the leading cryptocurrency, but its holdings are now significantly underwater. The firm said that it has spent about $4.03 billion to date on purchasing BTC at a per coin price of 30397 Ouch. So those are some diamond hands right there. And it's good to see that they are still continuing to buy, um, possibly with this year being over in a, in, a, in a week now, I guess. Things will turn around potentially after the new year goes in and then possibly towards the second half of 2023, I'm thinking. But we'll see. Okay, so that was, I thought, good news there. Bitcoin mining pool BTC suffers a 3 million cyber attack. Here's the little dirty tidbits about it. So a subsidiary of the coin minting company Bit Mining has been targeted in a hacking attack. The company said in a press release, the affected entity is a leading Bitcoin mining pool, BTC.com, which is which in the past week accounted for over 2.5% of the pool distribution and has a share exceeding 4% on an annual basis. And according to the announcement published Monday, the platform was hit on December 3rd. As a result, 2.3 million worth of digital assets owned by the company and another 700,000 in assets uh, value belonging to its clients were stolen. So it's not too bad, 700,000, but still a lot. If it's any small mining shops or something like that, that's going to hurt potentially them. But they are working to get those coins back and they have... Uh, they're working with authorities to do that. So always, if you're mining, get your coins off of the mining pools, sell them, do whatever, put them into a cold uh, cold storage or hardware sto uh, hardware wallets, something like that, get them off of there because there is always a potential being hacked. Okay, next, our big story here, Argo. So there's a lot to go over here. Uh, Argo blockchain announces transformational strategic Transaction with Galaxy, so that's Galaxy Digital. That's Michael, uh, what's his name? Novogratz, Mike Novogratz company. So Argo subsidiary to sell its Helios facility to Galaxy for 65 million and refinance asset-backed loans with a new 35 million loan with Galaxy. So that's good. Transactions will reduce total indebtedness by 41 million and simplify Argo's operating structure. So that's also good there. Argo will will maintain ownership of all mining machines and Galaxy will host Argo's fleet of Bitmain S19G Pros at Helios. So that's also good for them. They don't have to move them. They don't have to do anything with them. They can just leave them where they are and Argo or Galaxy is going to host the machines for them. So that's good. Transactions will strengthen Argo's balance sheet, improve Argo's liquidity position and enable the company to continue operations, which is great news as well. Uh, there was a lot of fear with them going potentially bankrupt. So the sale, <clears throat> excuse me, the sale of Helios to Galaxy and new asset backed loan. In addition, Galaxy will provide Argo with a new asset backed loan in an aggregate principal amount of $35 million with an initial term of 36 months. So that's not too bad for three years. Um, they're going to have to pay on it approximately, what, $12 million or so a year. That is, I think, definitely doable for them. This financing will be secured by a collateral backed package that includes 23,619 Bitmain S19G Pro mining machines currently operating at Helios 
and certain machines located at Argo's Canada, Canadian data centers, Argo has agreed to guarantee on an unsecured basis its subsidiaries' obligations under the definitive agreements and along with its other subsidiaries has agreed to guarantee on an unsecured basis and provide certain additional collateral for the financing. So they are putting up a lot of machines for that. The company is also committed to working with Galaxy to ensure a smooth transition at Helios and minimize any disruption to operations. So that's good there as well. The cash proceeds received from the sale of Helios along with a portion of borrowings under the asset-backed loan will be used to repay all existing indebtedness, prepayment interest, and other fees of appropriately $84 million and $1 million owed to NYDIG and North Mill Commercial Finance. Respectively, upon this repayment, approximately $6 million will be returned to the company f- uh, from a collateral account controlled by NYDIG. So they're getting some money back for that as well. So that's good there. Hosting agreement. So under a two-year hosting agreement with Galaxy, Argo's 23,619 Bitmain S19J Pro machines uh, currently operating at Helios will remain in operation at Helios. As the owner of Helios, Galaxy intends to enter into a fixed price power purchase agreement, PPA, with a licensed retail electricity provider to procure electricity for the facility. So this is the part that really hurt Argo here. They didn't have fixed pricing. They had basically whatever the pricing was at any given time. And that did hurt them quite tremendously as they were burning through cash like crazy and potentially going to bankruptcy. So the big if here is whether or not Galaxy can actually get a fixed pricing agreement in place and at what cost. Right now, pricing on electricity has gone up, like everything else has gone up. So is it going to be at $0.05, cents, $0.06, cents, $0.07? Cents? We just don't know. But it's still... It needs to be below eight and a half cents in order for it to make sense for them to do hosting and for the hosting customers to utilize their services as well. Okay, that's kind of my thoughts on that one. Now, let's see here. The the hosting agreement provides that Argo will have access to this electricity at the PPA rate. Argo will pay Galaxy a hosting fee and will collaborate on designing a curtailment strategy in order to participate in certain demand response programs offered by the Electric Reliability Council of Texas, which manages the power grid in Texas. Okay, so that's all good there. Next is uh, renewed focus on Canadian operations. So the company's Canadian assets are not affected by the, by the agreements with Galaxy, except for the use of certain mining machines and other assets located in Quebec as collateral for the asset back loan. Initially, Argo plans to refocus its efforts on growing and optimizing operations at its two data centers in Quebec, which are powered fully by low-cost hydroelectricity. The company currently has approximately 140 hash of hash rate capacity. It's, uh, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, BC and Mirabel facilities, which have 15 megawatts and 5 megawatts of power capacity, respectively. So that's not a lot of power, but they do have uh, potential to grow that a little bit here. Third quarter earnings, this is a little bit disappointing here. So in light of the transaction with Galaxy, the company will not report earnings results for Q3 2022 at this time. The company is designated by the SEC as a foreign private issuer and is required to comply with regulatory filing requirements in its home market. The UK Financial Conduct Authority requires semi-annual reporting of financial results, so twice a year, which is unfortunate. Um, I would hope that in time, maybe UK will get... um, the same kind of regulatory requirements that the U.S. has, which is every quarter they got to report, which makes it a lot uh, easier to track these companies. And I think it's better for the investors instead of having to wait a, ha- a whole half a year before things are reported. Um, quarterly, I think, is just great um, because we can see more insight as to what's going on and see quicker if something is going bad. Uh, so that's just kind of my take on that one. And that is it. So let's take a look at Argo really quick as far as what they have in the pipeline here and what's going on with them. So they currently are at 2.5 exa hash right now is what I have them down. Their future hash rate is 2.5. So they are fully installed with everything that they are going to be having. And so that's a good news there. They're going to be able to continue mining, which is fine. And they're going to pay down a lot of the debt that they have. Their Helios facility was their cash burn, which was the worst part of it all. Now that they are out of that one, I think their cash burn should get a lot better and they will be able to pay off some of these debts that they have here. So this is for Q2. Like I said, we don't have Q3 results. Don't know where they were in Q3, but this is from Q2. So total current assets at the end of Q2 was $166 million, and total current liabilities at that time was 78. So they must have been burning 
pretty pretty fast through that cash. Um, and they had, let me see here, how much did they have cash? Trade receivables, they had 99 million. Digital assets of 28 in cash, they didn't have that much cash. So they did have quite a bit of trade receivables, but like I said, they were burning through cash quite substantially because of the huge increase that we've seen in power and electricity. That definitely put a lot of hurt in them. Okay, other than that, there's not much else they can do. Um, I'm not sure about, I know the Helios facility has emergent cooling, not sure how much of it is emergent cooling, if all of it is. And I wonder if they're able to maybe increase the efficiency on the miners, increase the hash rate a little bit, maybe 20% or something like that. So even if they do that 20%, they could get close to maybe being at 3x a hash if that happens. Uh, other than that, we'll see what December numbers are like. They have been coming down here a little bit in BTC Mind over the last couple months. Uh, starting in August, they had 235. Then they were down to 215, 204, 198. I'm guessing December is going to be a little bit lower, probably around maybe 170, something like that. And their efficiency has also been coming down. So they've been shutting down for quite a bit here in the last couple months uh, because of the power expense. So we'll see if that can improve if and when Galaxy actually gets a fixed pricing agreement in place. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking at Argo right now. Uh, but we'll cover more as we get more information and hopefully get some... Uh, uh, financials reported on for the end of the year, which is now a week away. But that's still going to take at least a week, uh, month, month and a half to get those out. Okay, so that is it for it. Now, as far as Galaxy is concerned, I think they got a one heck of a deal on it. And let's take a look at it here. So Galaxy reported on this acquisition as well this morning. So Galaxy to acquire Helios Bitcoin mining facility from Argo blockchain. And here's the big takeaway from it all. So Helios is a large scale Bitcoin mining facility located in Dickens County, Texas, that has the ability to operate up to 100 megawatts of mining capacity. Currently utilizing emergent cooling technology upon receipt of certain approvals, Helios is expected to provide Galaxy with as much as 800 megawatts of capacity, enabling the company to grow its proprietary and hosted Bitcoin mining infrastructure beyond its previously stated goals. Helios, which sits on 160 acre campus, commenced operations in May of 2022. So it's a fairly new facility and is currently staffed by approximately 40 employees who manage day-to-day -day operations. That's a lot, uh, but it's also a pretty big facility. Okay. Now, if we look at where they are now, um, right now, they could get up to 180 megawatts. So if we look at the spreadsheet here, 180 megawatts, that's 0.16 or 0.18, sorry. 180 megawatts at, with the miners being, let me zoom this in for you guys. It's kind of small. There we go. So with the 140 terrorist miners, which they could possibly get in there, but we know they already have two point two points plus or minus um, exahash already in there. And those are at 100 terahash miners. They could get that up to about 4.36. If they eventually, down the road, they go to 140 terahash per miner, they could get to 6.11 exahash total for the 180 megawatts they currently have. Now, if they increase that to the 800 megawatts in time, which they're going to have to build out for that to happen, we're looking that they could get to 27 exahash when it's all said and done with the 140 terahash miners, not taking into account for any improvements that we might see in the next year to near to, to three years. I mean, we could be up to anywhere, I'd say maybe even 180 terahash per miner down the road. They could get them to... 34, almost 35 exahash just in that facility alone, which is huge. So they got a pretty good deal on it. They will have to expand it out to get to that point, but at least they have the potential to do that. So Galaxy, I got a heck of a deal on it, I think. Um, other than that, I'm a little bit disappointed that, <clears throat> excuse me, potentially Hot 8 Hive didn't go in on this. This seems like a slam dunk to me. Both have been talking about growing their hash rate, um, Hot especially. Um, also a little bit disappointed that maybe CleanSpark didn't pick this up. This was a pretty good deal also, <clears throat> excuse me, which I think would have been great for them, but it was a little pricey, 65 million. They could have done it with their ATM that they have access to. And, you know, the facility, part of the facility is already there. They could have done something with it, but I mean, it worked out for Galaxy and it worked out for Argo. So there's a good for that. But like I said, I'm a little surprised that Hut 8 and Hive especially didn't go pouncing on this when they have 
access to ATMs. They have access to the huddle positions as well. That they could have done this. And I think maybe the fear of it was getting a low enough, low enough cost on power at a fixed rate. I think that was the concern there, potentially. But let me know what you guys think of this. Um, you know, I was also thinking it would have been kind of nice to see the two Canadian miners, Hive and Hot 8, maybe do a joint venture where they bought up this facility and expanded it out together. But it is what it is now. So that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe. Helps me out. Also, spreadsheets available to my Patreon members. Uh, thank you to everyone there for their continued support. Thank you so much for watching. Love you all here. I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see what happens. Until then, bye.